So here we are in the kitchen of Lydia's with Lydia. Yeah. So tell me, who's the most important person in this kitchen? That guy there, the chef of the kitchen, Fortunato Nicotra. That's nice what it's all you. about. It's a pleasure. pleasure. Thank Monsignor, you. Monsignor, you're in good hands. Okay. And I expect a good meal today. You trust me with him? Oh yeah, you're in good hands. <laughs> yeah, Thank you're in, you. Thank you. So what are we preparing today? Uh, we prepare two uh, very popular dishes of uh, Lydia, very, very simple. One is a minestra di pesce, it's like a kind of a fish soup. Right. And of course you can use uh, any fish uh, available. We usually uh, use, tonight we're going to use uh, uh, lobster, scallops, shrimp and calamari. Okay. So you want to help me to... Sure, what are you going to do? Break we, these in half? We need to break this pasta like small, small pieces. Sure, I'll so do like that. So it's going to be like a soup. Uh, sure. So this time. is a little different than a, like a bouillon base because there's no pasta in it. No, it's not. Right. But it's like uh, it's nice because you cook everything in one pot, only one pan. So. Oh, okay. So I like dishes like that. Nice and simple. simple. Yep. So I'm gonna slice some of the fish while uh, do that. Okay. That's perfect. Enough. We can put it on the pan. Okay. Now, what uh, broth is in here? This is a uh, fish use, stock? Uh, or? This is lobster uh, in, uh, we use uh, uh, lobster broth. Okay. But depending on the fish you, you're going to use, it, you can use, uh, I don't know, if it's uh, any branzino, or mallet, or okay. scorpion fish, anything you find. And you can use it. So okay. here we have uh, the fish ready to go. We're going to wait a few minutes. The fish take a little less than, than the pasta to cook. Okay. And while the pasta is cooking, probably what we can do, we can start to prepare the next dishes. Is it okay with that? Sure, sure. So we have, uh, the next dish is going to be a tuna. Okay. Yellowfin tuna. We put a little bit of uh, olive oil. This is a dish from uh, uh, where I was uh, born, uh, Sicily. This mm -hmm. is a Sicilian dish. Here we have some bread crumbs, mm -hmm. a little pecorino cheese and herbs. But we, we're going to pass the tuna and the bread crumbs. Both sides? Only one side. One side, okay. Okay. Serve it with radicchio. Okay. That's a late harvest radicchio. So use that same oil that you. Yeah, the same oil. Okay. We leave it like that okay. on the side. It's ready to go on the grill. Now this grill is getting hot. Yeah, we wait okay. for the grill to be nice and hot. A little more. So the pasta cooks right in the broth there. Exactly. Wow. It's like a need for another part. I like it usually when I cook home. Also, I try to do. I told you this, this preparation because it's great. Also, the flavor is incredible because cook it directly in the broth. Doesn't cook in the water and then you put the, the sauce on. So right. it's, it's great. Now, what other ingredients do you have in there? I mean, you have some uh, fish stock or? It's fish stock, and then you use uh, carrots, uh, celery, onion, garlic. Okay. A little bit of tomato paste and, uh, or fresh tomato if you want a little more lighter. And, and that's it. Okay. Strain, cook like half an hour, 40 minutes, strain, ready to go. We probably want to start with the calamari. It would take a little longer. So you have to know which fish takes, you know, a little bit longer. So you yeah, put that in first, like be, any any type of if cooking. If you want to be precise, sure. otherwise you can put everything together. It's right. fine. It's not a question of uh, right. one minute more or less. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Right. So you're going to put uh, scallops in there as well? Scallops the last one because right. uh, it's really, really uh, fast to cook. The lobster in a little bit. And then it's uh, almost ready to go. So I'll be sure the grill is really, really hot. You put the radicchio. The radicchio doesn't need to be uh, really uh, cooked. Right, you just want to... just uh, uh, warm. Right, we right. Warm, we, we like to have like the crispness of the radicchio. Also, this is a great salad. Yes. A lot of times people don't think of, you know, uh, grilling certain vegetables that you put in salads, and, but radicchio grilled is yeah, we do, delicious. We grill also the, the Caesar, like we have a grilled Caesar on, uh, on, as a side on one of our popular dish. Is instead of the, do the regular Caesar, we grill the, uh, the jam salad, the jam lettuce, and then we put the Caesar dressing on top. Now how long have you been cooking here? Uh, 20 years. 20 years? 20 years. Where are you from originally? I'm from Sicily. Sicily? Grew okay. up in Piedmont. Oh, really? And adopted in New York. Wow, so you went from the south to the north. Yeah. So you're a bundle of skill and knowledge. <laughs> I have, I always say, I have like uh, 
Sicily for summer and spring, sure. summer and spring, and Piedmont for fall and winter. That's I great. I cover the whole, the whole uh, four seasons. Now, have you uh, mixed the two cuisines in your uh, in your yeah, cooking? Yeah, we use we use some of the Mi mix it. No, mix it is uh, is two completely different uh, uh, kind of technique and ingredient. So but I know they they're always you know saying the north and the south and you know and uh, I was wondering pasta, if you were dry pasta, butter, oil, oil, fish, tomato, meat. cream. <laughs> so it's a lot of. Uh, so you do you put the breaded side down? Yeah. Okay. What we like usually traditional is a, it's called a tuna palermitana. Traditional is braided in both sides and cooked in both sides. What I found is like a, the tuna. We really like the tuna, like the tuna red. You like the, the freshness of the tuna. Sure. So we cook it all in one side. It's nice and charcoal on the bottom with the breadcrumbs. But it's nice and fresh. You really taste the tuna on top. Yes. So, That's a. I never thought of doing it that way. And we can start to prepare the, the plate for the tuna. Okay. What we use here in winter time is um, use a puree of uh, beet and balsamic. With a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. So you do that with the back of the spoon. Yeah. This is such a simple dish, oui, oui. and it's fast. I mean, it's fast. You spend more time shopping. Well, you, you get everything it. ordered, but I mean delivered. But I mean, at home, if you want to prepare this, I mean, as long as you have the ingredients, you have everything in the house, and you can come home from yeah, work absolutely. and prepare this right away. How you like your tuna? You like a I like nice it rare. 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 So it's ready. The only way to eat tuna, I believe. <laughs> So you don't even uh, turn it over. You just don't cook it on one side. Right and that's some... Uh, it's some smoked salt. Smoked salt. So it's going to have the taste of the grill even on top of the tuna. Then I have here all the parts, the uh, outside leaves of the radicchio. We kind of marinated and fermented. So it's fermented radicchio. Is all the, the, the leaves they usually not good to go on the Right, right, right. So you marinated that right in. With a little vinegar, a little sugar, wow, a little this. salt. That looks fantastic. That's it, this dish is done. Great. So okay. we're gonna be all put this on the side. I would like to put the last one now because uh, take a few more minutes, few extra minutes. Now, is this one of your more popular dishes, these two yeah, dishes? Yeah, we sell out, especially in winter time, because it's the broth, it's, and it's cold. It's a kind of comfort uh, uh, dish, and a comfort food, because it's the broth, it's the tomato, right. it's the seafood, so it's really, really nice. And also, it's very simple. Right. People like these comfort dishes in the winter time, and yeah. on a nice, chilly day. So, and again, we don't want to overcook the You can fish. see, the, the lobster cooks like shrimp uh, instantly. That's the scallops and the... Yeah, scallops and shrimp. Shrimp. Oh, you have chopped up shrimp in there also. So it's calamari, shrimp, scallops, and lobster. Yeah. I'm gonna finish with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little parsley, and great to go. I mean, these two dishes, I mean, you whipped up in like uh, seven minutes. Yeah, 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 you have to have Everything is the preparation. Yeah, you have to prepare the broth before. But what you can do with the broth, usually what I do at home is like, I don't want to prepare the broth, both like chicken stock or beef or even fish. I do before, I do a big pot before, and then I freeze it in a little container, and every time I need it, it's ready to go. So you do the job one time, and that's it. Ready to go. So if someone wanted to try this at home, they could maybe use like a seafood bisque. Yeah, you can It'll use be uh, yeah, a simple way. <laughs> it's not going to taste the same. A little but tomato, just a little tomato. If you buy shrimp in a supermarket, right, you can use uh, the, the the head and the body of the shrimp, right, to make the broth. Instead, of do like uh, four or five different dishes. Right. Okay. 
house. It's not, we're gonna do like a small portion of because it's, uh, today is our appetizer. Yeah. And then we're gonna have the tuna. So I make it a little smaller. And if this was a main, if this was a main course, you would then uh, yeah, you give put a full some more water. fish and right. more broth. So finish with a little parsley and uh, some uh, good extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. I use this olive oil to finish it. That's it. It's ready to go. I like it with the pasta in here. That's really a, a nice dish. Wow, that looks great. So why don't we take these two dishes and we'll go into the. Uh, Dining room and we'll uh, taste. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. We'll be right back. Polenta. Yeah. And we had, we had a breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome back to Breaking Bread. We just left the kitchen and uh, we walked to this beautiful restaurant at uh, Felidia's. Uh, how long have you been here? Well, you know, Felidia is here since 1981. Really? Right, and uh, we just redid it, but uh, the chef, I was the chef before, and then Chef uh, Fortunato took over. Which, in which year did you take over? Uh, I arrived in 1995. 1995, 20 years ago. 20 wow. years ago. And we remodeled, this is actually a big uh, remodeling, yep. and actually uh, uh, Fortunato, the chef, was really involved in that. Did wow. you know, do you like it? Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, now tell me, I, did you, I was here a number of times, and I guess I was here the first time when you were, you were the chef. I mean, of course, I didn't know you then and all, but is this one of your first restaurants? This is, is the, well, uh, we were in Queens from 71 to 81, but that was kind of, you know, I was very young, I was sure. not a chef, I had a chef, and we, I work uh, alongside with him and uh, then we opened here in 81 and uh, the regional Italian food and then uh, until uh, uh, 95 14 15 years you know it's, that, it, sure. being in the kitchen is tough sure. and so Fortunato came uh, from Italy he was gonna he came here just to stay you know a few months just to kind of <laughs> <laughs> the last that was the idea <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea he's still here he has a beautiful family, three children, so That's he's wonderful. really American now. It's interesting that he, you were born and grew up in Sicily, but then you, you lived in Piemonte for a while, so he has Actually, the... Actually, grew up, I was born in Sicily, but I grew up in Piedmont. So okay. I moved to Piedmont when I was five years old. Now, your parents, of course, now came... Now back to Sicily. Right. They... But they brought with them the, Ita the, the Sicilian cuisine yeah. up to the north. That must have been very interesting, you know. Very, uh, and also because... Uh, it's like when I come in, in the States, when uh, even the people that come here in the States, they, they, you cannot find the ingredient that usually with sure. you, you cook on, the, the, the ingredient that you are familiar with. So it's a little... Uh, so they had, your, your mother had to learn to cook again, right? Because you're yeah, using no, different no, ingredients. She, she's, she can cook really, really great uh, Piedmontese meals. Wow. Yeah? Yeah, because she, she had to use what, what was around. Mm -hmm. So it was, was great. But what's, what's great about uh, Fortunato is that he has the southern Italian feel, he was born sure. into it, and then he was trained in the northern Piemonte. I come from the other north part, so we have Italy sure. covered. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so good and so well, so well known. That's Thank great. You. Now Thank you renovated you. recently? Uh, we did, we just, still there's a little touches, but uh, uh, we, we did, and uh, Fortunato had a lot, of, a lot of say in what, how he wanted, because it's sure. about him now, of this course. is his home. And uh, so I think it came out beautiful. Do you like it? I love it. I love it. I like you have these little private rooms here. You can have private parties, you know, lunches, business lunches. And uh, we're here now in this beautiful private dining room overlooking uh, yes, yes. Uh, 59th, 58th? 58th Street. 58th Street. Second and Third Avenue. Right, right at the foot of the bridge. Now it's yeah. the Ed Koch Bridge. It yes, used to be the yes. 59th changes. Street Bridge. Yes, yes, it changes. <laughs> yes, but we do. We have uh, actually three little party rooms, which. Uh, uh, you know, people enjoy having their events exactly. and whatever. So it's... Uh, and it's hard to find a lot of times a party room for a small group, 10, yes. 12, 15 people. Exactly. A lot of times they're bigger rooms or they're smaller rooms. And this is really no, no, we great. We have the intimacy of a, almost like a house. But it is a brownstone, yes. you know, so that's, that's what They it make is. the best restaurants. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This smells very good. Oh, and yeah. I, so, guys, I, I have to taste what you, did, what you did. Did you have fun in the kitchen? We did. And, I mean, I tell you, the chef, I mean, he, he's, he's excellent. I mean, he's fast. Boom, boom, boom. But, I mean, of course, so, so the So, is he... Is he yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you need a sous chef, I'm available. <laughs> All right. Should we taste... You know what I'm looking for. It, should we taste this little? And this is yeah. this is all what we we have on the menu too. This minestra, if you will. With all seafood. Mm. Mm. 
And you know the broken spaghetti. Did you did you yes. help him out? With yes, it? I broke it all up. Oh, all right. And you can use any type of pasta that's left over, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's but the idea. That's the idea to use um, as uh, also Lydia was saying before. If you have all different shape of, uh, of pasta, you can break it right. and and put it in any soup. And I think it's the base of this soup. What's what's good, you know, sometimes you have your fish, so you have. Uh, the heads of the laughters, the shell of the shrimp, and you know, whatever. all the flavors of all. Yeah. You make a ba basic stock. Right. And then you cook in the pasta right. and whatever. A lot of flavor. And that stock you use for any, you know, all, all your fish sauces and dishes and risotto if you want to. It has a, a you know, very similar to a, a bisque mm -hmm. flavor. But again, you know, the cultures are all the same, you know. What do you do with the leftover heads and all of that? You make a good stock. And uh, uh, a bisque, it yeah. continues to put some cream or cognac. Italian is simple, straightforward. And what's good, at, you know, what I always say about cooking, you can really mix together, especially today, all different flavors that years ago you really didn't want to mix. But now you mix things together and the flavors, they all come together. And, and you really put in whatever you desire when you like. I mean, what you like, you, you put it together and a lot of times it, it, it melts together. If you have a good sensibility for cooking right. and a good base and, you know, I mean, if you say... And fresh. You can, you, can, uh, you know, kind of uh, the cultures, mix the cultures, but even within the Italian tradition, you know, you have an idea of what to do, uh, like this tuna, sear it, but could you do another fish? I guess you could, sure. you know, with a little bit of breadcrumbs, that's where it's Sicilian. Yeah, uh, this is Sicilian. Both, the bread on both sides is called tuna palermitana. It's, uh, Everything breaded and put on a grill is called Palermitana in Sicily. And I tell you, the one thing that, I mean, yes, it's true in all cuisines, but to use fresh ingredients. Oh, that's, that's a key. Use that's ingredients, a you know, and, 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 and food that's, you know, fresh, you know, it's in season, and, and that's the key. That's I what mean, good food is all about. Absolutely. So can, can I, can I, can we toast yes. your, and welcome you in our house? I am Monsignor. very honored to yes. be here to break Cheers. bread with the both of you. and. Uh, Lydia, I have to say, I, I watched you on television many times, and you know our, our paths have crossed many times yes. and in different uh, events and charities that we both help out in. But I'm very honored to be here to well, with a, you. A real pleasure a, having a, you here, Monsignor. Thank you, thank you. And uh, salute. To be with your chef, okay. one of your chefs, because mm -hmm. I know you have a number of restaurants. Yes, yes. So, uh, but uh, he cooked for the Pope with me. So, oh, you did. Yeah, so, so this is this is the wow. team. This that is must the have team. Been some experience. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. talk to I'm Lydia about that. That's wonderful. That's great. All right. Salute. 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 And now the tuna that was just seared and um, and uh, with some breadcrumbs and Be seasoned bread, breadcrumbs. Bread, a little uh, pecorino, a touch of pecorino cheese, which is uh, typical Sicilian to put a little cheese on on the breadcrumbs and herbs. You can use uh, any herbs available and depend on the season. Mm -hmm. A little radicchio is. Uh, the, the hard uh, leaves, they are fermented. So we put it with a little vinegar, a little sugar, a little salt, and we let them uh, fermented. And the, the other radicchio, the center, the heart of the radicchio is just grilled really, for a few really minutes. Right? The sauce mm -hmm. is just beet and uh, balsamico to give that uh, a sense of Sicilian, even if those ingredients are not Sicilian, but we give that sense of agrodolce, like a sweet and sour, mm -hmm. which is typical Sicilian. I like that combination of the beets, the sweet, and, and the balsamic. Mm -hmm. This is a tremendously yeah. popular dish. People love, you know, people love tuna. And it's really light. Yeah. I mean, it's a light no? dish. And of course, how you cook the tuna. I mean, tuna, you have to eat rare. I mean, yeah. to me, I mean, mm -hmm. as you know, as a chef. Mm. Excellent. How often do you change uh, the menu? Seasonal? We change them uh, really often. We have like um, six, eight uh, big changes. And then, uh, depending on the market, like we said before, we're talking about fresh ingredient. We really use all of the seasonal fresh ingredient. Uh, you're not going to see us to use uh, broccoli wrap in uh, summertime, or asparagus uh, now. Right. Our, our menu is really, really uh, depending on what's in the market fresh. Right. What about, do you have uh, during the truffle season? I know we're in now. Do we some? ever? Yes. <laughs> now. Yeah. The whole, you know, the whole kind of, sometimes the whole restaurant, yeah. when people are beginning to and shave and, and, and cook. The smell is amazing. Oh, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's great. Truffles. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the prices too. I mean, that's unbelievable. What are the, too, I yeah. mean, I know when I was, <laughs> when I was cooking many years ago, uh, truffles were very expensive. What is it today? Just a, uh, This about. year is, uh, is not a good year for truffles. So Someone told me white truffles were about 
three thousand dollars a can pound. Be, can be can be three thousand. This oh year they are on like 25, 26, 24. <laughs> Dep de depend on the size. It's very the price depending on where the, the truffle come from and on the size also. Smaller, of course, they are cheaper and right. larger and round. Also, the shape of the truffle is very important. So, where would the best truffle come from? It's that? Piedmont, it's Alba, right, right. but uh, it's really uh, almost uh, no chance to see those truffle in uh, in New York because they, they, as they say for Las Vegas. White truffle from Alba, they stay in Alba. They don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't get out of Alba. Oh, that's great. All that's right. Great. But this is delicious, and uh, Chef, I really appreciate you taking the time out to be with us today, and uh, we will uh, see you real soon. Perfect. Thank you very much. Don't go so away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and I'm here at one of Lydia's New York restaurants for Lydia's, and we've been talking about uh, when you came to the United States. I know you weren't born here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you wound up here in New York? Well, see, I came here as an immigrant at 12 years old. And the story is, you know, Italy has 20 regions, so I come from the northeast of Italy, under Austria, now it's Slovenia. But there's a little part, a little peninsula called Istria, which belonged to Italy. And after World War II, Italy lost the war. Right. Uh, the whole discussion of the border, the Paris, Paris Treaty, that part where I was born was given to the newly formed communist Yugoslavia. Okay. And I was just born at that period, so therefore we got caught behind the Iron Curtain. And uh, we stayed there a few years, I guess my parents, until I grew up, until I was about 10. And then they decided that they couldn't live under communism because, you know, under communism, we couldn't speak any more Italian, we couldn't go to church, we couldn't do any of our things that as Italians, you know, makes us right. who we are. And uh, we actually, because we had relatives on the other side, you know, the, 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 the border went down and whoever got caught where. And uh, in 1956, uh, my parents decided it was time to maybe go back to Italy, but you couldn't go back as a whole family. So my mother, my brother and I, uh, went be supposedly to visit the sick aunt in Trieste right. and my father remained uh, as a hostage because they wouldn't allow they wouldn't allow the whole family because they, they wanted to make sure you came back <laughs> exactly exactly so we went over and about two weeks later my father literally escaped the border wow. ran over the border got shot at made it and we were reunited in Trieste and they wanted to start their lives uh, over again in Trieste, but it was difficult, uh, you know, the aftermath of the war, sure. jobs and whatever. They decided that maybe they better migrate on into the world. Uh, you know, they were looking at Australia, Canada, America. And to do that, uh, we had to enter a refugee camp. And uh, there was San Saba, which now is a museum, uh, was a political refugee camp. And we lived there for two years awaiting a turn. Now, now, as, as you know, the, the, the Vatican took on the responsibility of taking care of the refugees in that aftermath of the war. The Catholic Relief Services. Catholic Relief okay. Services. And so we stayed there for two years and uh, ultimately uh, Dwight Eisenhower was the president. He opened up immigration in the States and he opened it up for people fleeing communism. And we were one of the first family. And the Catholic Relief Services brought us, took, paid for our trip, brought us here. And when we came here, they took care of us. You know, we went to the social worker once a week because sure. we had nobody here. Sure. And ultimately they found a job for my father. Uh, a little house for us, and we began our life uh, in the United States. That was 1958. Now, did your did your father work in the uh, culinary business? I mean, the no, food my business? no, my mother was an elementary school teacher, okay. and my father was a mechanic. Okay. He had a, a truck, which they took away in communism, but he had uh, uh, the mechanic and the truck business. So he, he got a job here in New Jersey at Chevrolet as a mechanic. Okay. And my mother, as a seamstress, because of course she couldn't speak the English and be the teacher. So I guess the question is, how did you get involved in the culinary arts? Well, let's go back okay. to that little place in, in Istria, whatever. Um, my my uh, parents put my brother and myself uh, with my maternal grandmother. That was out of the city where nobody could see us. So with my maternal grandmother, she would take us to church, we could speak, we could kind of be a little bit of ourselves of what we are, speak Italian. And there, 
It, she was great. She was a great cook. But she, we also had all the courtyard animals. You know, we had the chickens, we had the ducks, we had the rabbits, we had the goats, milked the goats every morning. We had, that was what we had for breakfast, made ricotta. But also, her and grandpa made the olive, olive oil, the wow. wine. We had pigs, we made prosciutto once a year. So as a young child, I was kind of, you know, the, sure. the, 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 uh, the helper, the little right. helper. But I was involved in all of that. And, you know, I remember uh, making, kneading the dough with grandma, making the bread. Uh, uh, co-harvesting, you know, the seasonal harvest, the, those perfect figs, sure. uh, and so on. I, so I think that that my my passion and and for flavors, for food, for was born there. And then as I went along uh, in Trieste, my great aunt was a great cook, and uh, I helped her again. But you know, I think, uh, Monsignor, where, where the passion really came once, because when we first left Istria, us kids didn't know, so I never said goodbye to my grandmother or to my friends. And I think I was always that longing, and I think the food was the connector. Yes. Me cooking the flavors that my grandmother, the smells, the whatever, and uh, I then I began sort of communicating to myself, sure. but then that was my life. That's so true today, like, you know, around the holidays. We prepare a lot of the dishes that we prepared with our parents and grandparents. It's that connect connections that we have with them to keep them with us yeah, that's so true the smell of uh, wow. food 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 is uh, is uh, very unique you know uh, uh, yes we need it we need it to but survive and, right. and nourish us but we also need it emotionally and then as a, a, a young girl you started to work in a, a pizzeria is that true? well uh, a bakery no, the first <laughs> my first job I was uh, 14 and uh, I will I lived in Astoria right. and uh, I told a lie okay Okay. But a little white line. <laughs> you I, I went to Walkins Bakery. That was Walkins. I grew up in the store. I used to shop in Walkins. There you go. And maybe wow. I, maybe I took care of you. I mean, you're much younger than I am, so you must but have I'm been sure, like this. Yes, my parents always went there. We went there for the Continental Rolls. So the, the line was out the door. Continental <laughs> Rolls were wow. great. But I I told them I was 16, and at 14, uh, I want I needed to work on weekends, you know, to supplement a little bit, to have a little money to spend, and they took me on. So wow. when I was 14, I started working there, and I worked there for about. Oh, quite a while uh, but yes that was the the, the infamous you know Christopher Walken sure, and the whole yeah. An actor, sure. yeah 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 and that was the beginning and then when when I went on to to Manhattan to Hunter College or whatever I began working in the city in the restaurants first you know you become uh, as a waitress and whatever sure. but I always gravitated towards the kitchen somehow that's great that's great I know even for myself I started out in the kitchen I was 11 years old I started baking cakes and you know, my mother used to bake, and my father used to cook also. And really, it, that really began my passion for it. And then during high school, I worked for a caterer after school. And you know, one thing leads into another. Hey, I like this. You know, Italians, we like to eat. That's right. But uh, you know, it, it has to be instilled in you. I think it, it's one of those vocations that you don't just choose and pick. It, it starts when you're very young, and it comes. I think I believe, from, as you said, from our family values and our family traditions, and, and it moves on. From but there. but it's such a wonderful way of giving of yourself. Sure. You know, sure. you you're cooking. I mean, when when I cook for somebody I just want I want to give them something right. I want to not yes the food the flavor but you know I want to tell them that uh, I love them or I appreciate them or whatever sure. so food is so much more I know getting back to the uh, Catholic Relief Services you said how they gave you that opportunity to become something mm -hmm. and to really you know uh, contribute and give back to the world and you have done that. I mean, you mentioned it many times that if it wasn't for Catholic Relief Services helping you and your family, you would not be where you are today. And look how much you give back. Most, I mean, it's most certainly. Yeah, I feel I feel very grateful, and uh, that somebody was there for us. Sure. Uh, you know, you have nobody. We had nobody here, and uh, uh, so so you know, more most appropriate times now with all this immigrant situation sure. and coming and going. I can really we have understand. To give them that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Sure. it's you know, if you're blessed enough to to have been given an opportunity, sure. then there's always something you can give back. Yes, yes. And I have to say, you know, uh, you do many things in your life, and I know you you're very busy. You travel all over the place. You have restaurants. You you give lectures. You you're a, 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 an author of many cookbooks. Tell me, what was it like? cooking for the Pope. <laughs> you know, Not one, but two. Listen, you, two, two. I, you know, I still pinch myself. I still say, did I, I can't do believe that? believe it. No, I can't. One, then two. Uh, I, I guess, you know, 
do you know how I think that really began? And how I got to know, because of course, you know, the Vatican, the Pope didn't sure. know that me. Benedict came about seven years ago. Exactly. That was the first time. Well, what, what we did, and actually Angelo Vivolo, our mutual right. friend, and I, we, we worked uh, at the United Nations for UNIFEM, the United Nations Female Organization. Okay. And that's helping women in the third world country. Okay. And we would host, every year we would do a fundraiser, a big fundraiser, to help women, uh, and you know, sometimes in, in third world countries, there's a single, single, single mom uh, right. run family, sure. and uh, there at the time there was uh, the the uh, Celestino Migliori, and sure. he he was the the ambassador, the nuncio, to the United Nations, the United nuncio Nations, yes. from the Vatican yes. to the United Nations, and I think that you know he got invited to some of the events and whatever, and we began a conversation, and uh, uh, I think that you know. Sure. He understood that maybe, maybe that would be when the Pope was coming, that that right. would be a possibility. And he came over and he says, Lydia, uh, you know, the Pope Benedict, that was seven right. years ago, is coming. Would you cook for the Pope? And I says, would I cook? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <sure. laughs> but you know, you know what was in your, I didn't think it was going to happen, you know? I thought, yes, yeah, you sure, know, sure. but they're going to have somebody else do, do the thing. Instead, it did happen. Wow. And it was extraordinary. That's good. I, I, I must say that initially, you know, you kind of really, I got kind of, uh, not frightened, but flustered. Okay, what am I going to do? How? Now you know that when when His Holiness comes, he stays at the Nuncio's house. Right, right. So they don't stay. Street, yeah, yes. they don't stay in hotels. Right. And Nuncio's house is pretty much a regular house. Right, right. It's a great, beautiful house, but it has the entrance, the kitchen in the back, the dining room upstairs, the living room, and then the papal suite upstairs, right. the bedroom and yes. the, in the chapel. And so you know, to cook in the same house that the Pope lives, you know. You know when you were a kid, you were sleeping, the smells were coming oh, sure. out. You know, so I was imagining, you know, this is really like family. We're part of his family. Yeah. And once I got to know the house, and once I got in there, and it was kind of in this in this celestial bubble, if you will. Yeah. Once I was in there, I was peaceful, serene, and I did what I did. And, um, you know, I did for, for Pope Benedict, uh, and as well as for Pope Francis. I felt kind of a, a great mission. Right. You want to know the mission? Yes, the I mission, do. The <laughs> mission, well, you know, this, th these holy people that we look to so much to give us a, a spiritual support and all of That's that. Right, sure. And I was put in a position to give them bodily support, human, you know, really the energy that they would need to do what they yeah. were meant to do. So I felt I had a mission. That was great, that yeah. was great. Now I know that, um, is it true that uh, Pope Francis, after he had lunch, he came down into the kitchen to say thank you and he had an espresso with you? He did, he did, <laughs> he did. You know, he was here 40 hours in New York City, so we had two breakfasts, one lunch, and two dinners for him. And Friday, uh, lunch, he, we, we, we did lunch and he went to rest a little bit and then all of a sudden we were in the kitchen kind of planning, having our little espresso right. and the secret service man ran in the kitchen, the Pope is coming, the Pope is coming. <laughs> I said, oh my God. And so there he kind of just walks in the kitchen, you know, and he says, por favor un café con boy. I says, por favor un café, can you have a coffee? <laughs> <Sit down>. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, no, he didn't want to sit down. I offered him a stool, he had a black coffee. And I know my daughter was there too, and she ran wow. for that coffee. She got hooked on the door, ripped the thing, but she didn't make my, anything. <laughs> she was back with that coffee, and he sipped it, no, no, no sugar, wow. no nothing. And do you know that he spoke to every single one of us, uh, asking about personal things, blessed us individually. And the most moving part, when he actually said goodbye, he said, pray for me. Yeah. You know, this need, this kind of, he empowers you. Yes, he does. You, you know, like, you, I'm gonna pray for you. Sure. I mean, you know, what, 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 and, but. To, and he really speaks to you. He spends time yeah, with you. I does. had the opportunity to be at the airport when he arrived. And um, when he comes down, he greets you and he looks you in the eye. He really spends he that moment with you. And you can see when, you know, we had people from the diocese who were, especially young people who were suffering and had life-threatening diseases. And he went and he greeted each one and their family members. And he spends the time. He's in your presence. Yes. He's not just looking to the next person. No, 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 no. And he's a very special man. And no matter what, he always ends, pray for me. Yes. Because he's a very humble man. And he needs our prayers just as much as we need his. And it's, uh, I'm sure that those moments you'll never forget. Never. I mean, he's part of, he's part of my, he was always part of our, uh, my life, certainly, uh, 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 as, as, as a, uh, a pope. But I feel like, 
almost family. You know, when you yeah. feed somebody, when you uh, kind of it was was living in the same house for a few. Of, so so I feel that's great. I feel a special connection. I think that's kind of like your mission now. When the Pope comes to New York, <laughs> well, I think it's it's gonna I, for for a while now. Maybe it's gonna it's gonna stay this way. So Lydia, I know we all know that the Holy Father is a very a very humble man. Uh, I don't think he likes big gourmet meals. I know he likes to sneak out of the Vatican, whether it's true or not, for a slice of pizza. What did you prepare for him? Well, let me tell you, I had big intentions. <laughs> you know, Argentina, I envisioned big pieces of meat. I was going to do a whole ribeye wow. and bring it out. You know, I was going to No, no, no. <laughs> so, from the Vatican, says, no, 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 no. Very simple uh, fish, chicken, veal, and uh, vegetables. Rice. 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 Now, you know, he is Piedmontese, right. so uh, they love their rice. He loved risotto. I made risotto twice for him, once with vegetables, once with mushrooms. Oh. I made a big pot of uh, soup with the agnolini, capon soup with a little bit of yeah. agnolini, and then the other time with rice and mixed vegetables together. He loved it. Oh, he, he must ate. have loved you. <laughs> yeah, he, he loved it. He ate. He ate well, you know, and then uh, on Friday, uh, fish. Long Island, we got some fresh, you know, we have a fisherman that sure. fish for a beautiful two big bass, we put it in the oven. He loves his vegetables. He likes squash, he likes beets, he likes kale, potatoes. He likes his sweets too, you know? Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That I didn't know. You have to tell yeah, us some of those secrets. He didn't eat too much. Uh, I mean, I made for him angel cake with... Uh, Is that true? They, I read that. It was angel food cake. I thought, I thought, you know, light. It doesn't get any light. And then a little play on, on the subject. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. He loved it. It was light with some Concord grape sorbet. Then I made a nice open apple tart. And uh, so he ate, he ate the apples, not as much of the crust, but he ate well. That's great. Yeah, that must yeah, have been yeah. some He's, experience. Oh, uh, it was extraordinary. I'm sure if he comes back, they'll call you again. I'm hoping, certainly, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I actually offered to come to the Vatican whenever you he... You never know, you may get a call with him. <laughs> he, he loves surprises. That's great, that's great. Yeah, it was, was super. So we're very happy that uh, you were able to come to this country because now we're all benefiting <laughs> from your you know, culinary skills, let me tell you. Thank Speaking you. of culinary school, skills, we're gonna take a break and when we come back, uh, we'll be talking about uh, one of Lydia's newest cookbooks. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and I'm here with Lydia at Felidius, and she just handed me one of her newest cookbooks, Mastering the Art of Italian Cuisine. So tell me, I just briefly looked through this. It's almost like an encyclopedia of cooking. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. That's, but, but, but it is. It's a collection. You know, this is my tenth book, and the other books were thematic, whether they were regional, whether they were Italian-American, right. but this is all encompassing, and it's about all, you know, along my 40 years cooking Italian food, the little tips that I learned, the little techniques that I learned, and you kind of sort of put them away. And I share them here in really simple language. You know, I mean, uh, the, the, the technique of braising, of roasting, dry roasting, wet roasting, steaming, when should you do what? Right. You know, how to buy, how to select product. When how, to buy. Exactly. You know? I mean, cooking in sure. season, uh, you know, how to, how to store them. How to replace in a recipe, how to make a recipe. You know, you have a recipe, and if you don't have, let's say the recipe says halibut, but you have codfish, can you replace? Of course you can replace, you know. But you just, there's certain elements that you keep in mind that codfish cooks much quicker than halibut, and therefore lessen the temperature and lessen the time. So it's, it's one of those kind of, the first 56 pages, it's all about food, how to buy it, how to store it, the techniques, uh, the applications, all of that. And then you go into the recipe. Right. Now, there's more than 400 recipes here as well. And those are the secrets that really people don't know. You know, it's like when you're asking your mother or grandmother about a recipe, oh, a little of this, a little of that. And there's so many techniques that kind of die off with them. Yeah. And you put this in but, this book. But absolutely, so. you know what? The people, people don't think that they know. And a lot of them are even common sense. And when they'll read this, they'll say, yeah, you know, that's right. You know, this is what my grandma used to do. Yeah. This is, and so I'm kind of reawakening the reality and you know, what is technique? Techniques, you know, that have been developed and evolved through yeah. our, the culture, the Italian culture, through generations. When I first looked at the book, it reminded me when I was at the Culinary Institute, we had the, uh, uh, the professional chef, that was the first book 
And it was the same thing, all the you know, product identification, all the foods and how to buy. But it didn't get into as many, much details as you did. But then the techniques and the recipes, and it's kind of like the same thing. And, and what's also good, I mean, I looked through it you know, briefly, this is good for the beginner and also for the professional. Because there are a lot of things in there that, you know, yeah. Yeah, not you everyone can, knows. You can grow the techniques this and, book, you can grow this. I hope this book really stays as a reference book and whoever buys it in their kitchen, sure. in their cookbook. I hope it transcends generation. I hope it is given as a gift, a wedding gift or a gift from mother to daughter and so on. And it is, uh, it's a book that even if you're not cooking Italian, what would Lydia do in this case? You have an artichoke. What would Lydia do with it? How does she clean it? Sure. Well, this is to come back to this and make reference. Now, you also go into the different regions of Italy uh, from the products and different foods and stuff. Well, you know, the Italian cuisine is uh, certainly about cooking in season, cooking simple, but it is about the traditional products, right. you know. What would Italy be without the aceto balsamico, without the grana padano, without the prosciutto di parma? So I go into all of this and recognizing, you know, each the cheese, the value of cheese, how to use it, and each region has its sure. own different because of different climate, different topography. The traditional ingredients are different. Right. I, I can relate to that because as a priest, you're in different parishes, and there are different. Uh, Italians from different regions and ah. of course oh we don't do it that way you know and they, they're always you know uh, I wouldn't say criticizing but they're a little critical of other people's they cooking. Are, they are, they are, you know, you know and so you know I get a lot of that the young the, uh, girls that come or women that come to sign the book say oh my mother my mother and I watch it watch you all the time and I says does your mother approve <laughs> you know That's because true. always this oh in my region we do it this way <laughs> there's always that debate the north or the south you know yeah, 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 yeah. But but that's, uh, that's great. Now, when did this book come out? Just recently? Just uh, in October. Just October, out, okay. Yeah. And I know you had a couple of book signings. and uh, It did, yes. Yeah. So I'm still uh, kind of, you know, when you, when you uh, release a book, of course, the publisher wants you to go out there and make it be known. And so I do it. But I do it with pleasure. That's great. I'm thinking of maybe of putting a book together myself. Maybe I can ask you for a little help. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Okay. That, that'll, that'll be great. Yeah. So now, uh, also, it has a glossary in here, too, of all terms. You know, a lot of times people, you know, don't know. But I think that's so important, a place of reference where you can reference. And I must say, you know, my daughter, Tanya, who collaborated with me, she actually, we did five books together. But she's an art historian, so research and all of that is really what she loves to do. And the glossary in the back is really extensive. And it has all the, you know, what is the difference between a trattoria and, and, a, and an osteria, you know, mm -hmm. little things like that. What is the difference between uh, balsamico tradizionale or bal balsamico commerciale? Right. And so these are the little things to understand. Right. A little explanation, straightforward, sure. almost like a dictionary. It's like, you know, olive oil. What's the difference between extra virgin and virgin? You know, people don't know, you yeah. know, and it, it's right here. And, it, and this is great. This is good for, you know, for young people too, because today so many young people young children are getting involved in cooking much more than when we were growing up yeah. and I think something like this you know kids love to read also and I think something like this they can learn a lot because you know a lot of them don't have the grandparents and their parents around as we yeah. did yeah. so this book will capture that. You know, you know Monsignor, I get a lot of a lot of that um, uh, thanking uh, it says you know my grandmother passed before I can take uh, the recipes from her. So your books bring me yeah, there. Yeah. So there's a lot of that sort of family uh, connections here. And you know, the kids are much more into cooking. You're right, because you know, this is, uh, sure. I guess the time has come to come back to the table, back together. That's the yeah. hence our name, yeah. Breaking Bread, because yeah. so much takes place around the table. Like you said earlier, it's not just about cooking with your grandmother, it's the time being spent. And as a, a young child, you enjoy just being with the grown-ups, being with your grandmother, being with, you know, your aunts, and, and learning from them. You know, like all kids are curious, but those are moments that, unfortunately today, we don't have enough of. Yeah. And people have to come down and break bread, sit down at a meal. I mean, growing up, no matter what, everyone worked. You know, our parents worked, but we came home at night and we had a meal. And if our fathers were working late, when he came home, we sat down and had coffee, or, you know, dessert with them or something. That's missing today, and it's so important. I think people are getting back into it. Yes. You know, that's why yes, you know, we, your, we your show are, yes. is popular and people are watching. And I think, you know, I almost feel it's, it's an antidote to this electronic media that we're into exactly. so much our, by ourselves, sure. that the table kind of opens up, sure. open, opens us. But you know, 
breaking bread is not a new phenomenon. No, no. <laughs> and it's something we, like you said, we have to get back to and it's so important today. And you know, it's coming out of me alone and sharing with others Absolutely. and especially, you know, family and friends who you love very much. Lydia, thank you so much for being on our show. I have to say, it was kind of like going to visit the Pope. Because <laughs> as a chef, wow. you know, as a priest, going to see the Pope is special. Wow. As a chef, it was an honor oh, for me to be here. It was, it was my pleasure. That. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. And you know, we've sort of seen each other through the years yes. and done many things. But to be with you and to have been invited on your show and to have you come to our house and our kitchen was our pleasure. Thank you so much. And I wish you a lot of luck with your new book. Thank and uh, if anyone would like to uh, learn about some of Lydia's secrets, you can uh, go out and purchase this, the Mastering the Art of Italian Cuisine. So until the next time, thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you next time on Breaking Bread. Thank you once again for joining us as we go into our neighborhoods to meet the members of our church family in Brooklyn and Queens, where they are, in their kitchens and around their tables. We hope we have taught you something today, not only about the dishes we have prepared, but also about the great people who make up our family of faith in our ethnically diverse city. The three F's of life are faith, family, and food. And there is no better way to experience them all than in our kitchens and around our dinner table at the end of each day. You just have to make the time to make it happen. This is Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello, reminding you that together we can continue to build the church by devoting ourselves to community, prayer, the teaching of the apostles, and the breaking of the bread. May God bless you always.